Hey everybody, welcome to Galaxy CD's Rocks and Flips. If you are a repeat offender here, thank you so much for your recidivism. And if you are new here, my name is Ryan and I am a full-time reseller working out of my home here in the greater Cincinnati area. And this channel is all about the flip game. We'll talk about my scores and my sales, my wins and my fails, and hopefully along the way, you'll pick up some things, some new items that you might want to check on while you're out treasure hunting, some new techniques that you might want to do when you're listing, or other hopefully helpful information. I also hope that you'll share in comments with me the things that you're doing and the things that you're finding so that I can continue to learn as I progress in my journey as a reseller. Today's video is essentially just going to be about some of the things that have left the galaxy here over the last few days that I thought you might find interesting. But before I get into that, I did want to take a moment to comment on the things that are going on in the real world outside of the reselling game. As a 54-year-old white man, I will never be able to fully understand or comprehend the fear and the anguish of our minority, particularly our African-American brothers and sisters. I am essentially the epitome of white privilege. If you don't look ex essentially exactly like me, you have probably at some point in your life faced discrimination, hostility, bias, um, this country has historically, unfortunately, not lived up to its lofty goals and values. And I recognize that from my vantage point, putting this on a YouTube channel with less than 20 subscribers and generally fewer than 20 viewers, saying that I support you and that I am with you is the proverbial drop in the ocean. But together, those drops in the ocean can become the torrent that changes this country and moves us in the direction of those wonderful lofty goals that we have essentially never managed to achieve. So for what it's worth, from this one 54-year-old white guy down in his bat cave talking about reselling, please know that I support you. I am with you. And I believe in my heart that we are indeed all one people. Thank you for allowing me to indulge in that political commentary. And with that, let's get on to some of the things that we've sold in the last few days. First up, I have this collection of two Arthur Bent books, um, Life Histories of the North American Wood Warblers. I picked up, there was an entire series of these. I believe it was 26 volumes in all. I got them at an estate sale for about 25 cents a piece. I bought the whole collection and I parted them up either by the volumes that went together or individually if they had significant value. In this particular case, these two went for $13 plus uh, free shipping. So at less than 50 cents probably in the two of them, this was a reasonably profitable sale. Collections of books like this, if you can get a whole series, Sometimes they can be really valuable as a set. In this particular case, it made more sense to break them up. Uh, the shipping costs for these 26 books would have been outrageous. And the likelihood of finding somebody that wanted all 26 was probably not real great. Uh, so I did opt to break them up into smaller sets. Uh, but I've sold almost all of these now and have made a fairly substantial amount of money on them. So don't pass these up if you see these kind of things. Um, birding and bird watching these books as fast as i can list them generally i'm selling them they seem to be very very good sellers next up if you watched my haul video from a couple of weeks ago you may remember that i had this uh, kobe bryant youth basketball jersey i commented at the time that if i got really lucky i might get a couple of guys that were bidding against each other and this thing could become a, a home run as it turned out it's let's call it a ground rule double I got $6.50 in it. I sold it for $33.50 plus shipping. That's not a bad flip. It's not the $60 or $70 that these were going for a couple of months ago, but it essentially paid for almost everything I bought at that particular sale. 
Um, so I'll, I'll put that in the win column. Again, not, not quite the Grand Slam I was hoping for, but we'll take it. Next up, you may recall in, I think it was my last video, or maybe it was the one before, I'm having a hard time keeping them all straight, to be honest. I showed you that I had picked up some US Open USGA member golf towels. I got 15 of them in a lot. Uh, they wanted a dollar a piece and I got them for 10 bucks for the total. I've already sold two of these, the one you see here for 10 bucks, and then this next one that I sold for $14.99, both plus shipping. So I've grossed $25 already on a $10 investment. Um, so I'm well into the black on this deal, and I've still got 13 of these towels left. Uh, again, a, a fairly unusual item. There's not a lot of these listed. Um, golf fans can be kind of passionate about collectible stuff like this. So if you can pick them up cheaply enough, those worked out to, I think it was like 67 cents a piece. Um, they're turning into pretty decent money. So I'm really pleased with how that has gone. Old Vintage Magazines. This is a 1947 edition of the Saturday Evening Post. Um, I'm old enough, as I mentioned kind of at the start of the video, that I remember the Saturday Evening Post. My grandparents used to get it. And I got this super, super cheap at an estate sale. I think I've got maybe 10 cents in it. I bought two or three of them that were in reasonably good condition. They were actually in uh, cellophane plastic sleeves so whoever had them took reasonably good care of them I had it listed for $27.99 it's been in my inventory for months so it was part of my 50% off promotional strategy for aged inventory um, I received a message on it last week wanting to make sure that it was the complete magazine and I wasn't just selling the cover because sometimes people do sell just the cover art from these um, I told the guy, no, it is indeed the full magazine. I sent him a couple of pictures, and he went ahead and bought it at $13.99, free shipping. Um, cost a few bucks to ship, but all in all, it was still a money-making uh, venture. I don't know if I would recommend for everybody picking up these old magazines. Um, again, if, you're, if you don't have a store and you have a limited number of listings, those listings may be more valuable than you would want to use for an item like this. Um, but as a store holder with eBay, I have enough listings that these kind of make sense for me. Uh, the next thing, I don't know if I showed you this in a previous video, but I, I buy a lot of Bibles. Uh, religious books in general um, do fairly well. This is a vintage 1945 King James version with the cross zipper. Uh, the zipper was intact and in good shape. The actual contents of the book uh, the pages were just crystal white. I mean, they were really, really in good shape. The cover, clearly from the photo, is quite worn and faded. I suppose you could clean it up. I tried to clean it a little bit, and it ended up looking a little mottled there, so it wasn't really great. Um, but it was in okay condition, and again, it's a fairly unusual piece. I sold it for 10 bucks with free shipping. I own it for 50 cents, so I made a few bucks on it. Um, like I said, I buy lots and lots of Bibles and they tend to range you can generally get them for anywhere from 50 cents to a buck to sometimes two dollars and generally speaking they sell anywhere from 10 to about 50 dollars depending on what it is so unless they're totally ratted out um, I will generally go ahead and pick them up I've had great success with them I just listed a bunch more um, this week so maybe in a future video we'll be looking at a few more of those this next thing I want to show you, um, I was at a sale, I, I, was, I went to an estate sale, and as I was driving down the road, I saw another sign for another garage sale. And a lot of times, if I've got a bunch of sales on my list, I, I just don't go to these one-offs that I find. But I only had five on my list that day, so I decided, you know what, when I finish where I'm going, I'll swing back by there and see what they got. I walk up, and I can tell immediately there's probably not going to be anything that I want. I'm wearing a old uh, Renault Formula One shirt, and this old guy comes up to me, and he says, Are you into racing? I said, Yeah, I, I watch a lot of Formula One and IndyCar. Why? He says, Do you have a minute? I want to show you something. Sure. This guy is probably, he's very late 70s or early 80s. So we wander off out back to his shed, 
and he opens up his shed and he shows me this. It is a it is Jeff Gordon's original dirt sprint track car. And it turns out this guy is in his second career is a sports writer, independent contractor, uh, freelance writer. He's written 80 eight zero eighty books on cars and racing and over the years he tracked down all of the parts from Jeff Gordon's original dirt track car and rebuilt the thing in his garage Jeff Gordon has been to this guy's house this car has been to uh, museums and Hall of Fames literally all over the country he has um, he has interviewed, he took me to his uh, racing cave, hundreds of pictures. This guy has interviewed Jackie Stewart, um, Jimmy Stewart, the actor, um, AJ Foyt, Mario Andretti. I mean, the list just went on. I was just in awe of all of the photographs and the memories this guy is sharing with me. I spent an hour with this. I, didn't, I bought one book at the sale for a dollar. That's uh, They had nothing I wanted. But I literally spent an hour there just talking to this guy. It turns out his first career was that he was an aerospace engineer. And he worked on the design team in Huntsville, Alabama that designed and built the Saturn V rocket that took us to the moon. He worked with Werner von Braun, who you may have mixed opinions about with his Nazi past background, but was clearly a, a genius in the area of rocket science. Um, and it was just absolutely fascinating to talk to this guy. So there's no real moral to the story other than, you know, I had a video last week about, you know, why it pays to talk to people at garage sales and strike up conversations. And this was a case where it, it didn't pay me any financial benefit. I got, no, I, like I said, I picked up one book for a dollar that may or may not ever sell. Um, but that was the best hour I have spent with someone that I didn't know in years. I absolutely, totally enjoyed my time out there. So Bill Holder, if, if you happen to stumble on this video, uh, I, I said what, when I left and I said in the letter that I sent you, thank you so much for sharing that time with me and sharing your stories and your vintage car and everything else, I absolutely had a blast. With that, if you've enjoyed this video, if you could do me a favor and whack that thumbs up button, I would absolutely appreciate it. Uh, if this is the kind of content that you like to see, please feel free to subscribe and click that bell notification icon so you don't miss a minute of the action. I do hope you enjoyed this and as always, Thank you so much for stopping by the Bat Cave and spending a little bit of time with me. And now, it's time to sell. Thank you, guys.